Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to calculate the critical bending moment of a simple beam under distributed load, which we went through with uh, three videos earlier. Uh, first, we calculated the critical load according to the total potential energy and also using two functions for approximation of buckling. Then we model the same beam with ANSYS and RFEM from the low wall. And now I'm going to use one of the uh, widely used uh, equations for this calculation. The source of this uh, the used equation is given here in the notes that you can find out the equation. Let's have a look what we had earlier. We assumed that we have a beam under distributed load Q and we assume that the supports are in a way that they are completely fixed in terms of rotation at both ends so this was if this is x d about x was zero the equation given in the source is for doubly symmetric sections there is uh, another factor c3 uh, we have here C1, C2, and there is also C3 for uh, asymmetric cross sections, but for double symmetric uh, sections, you can use this equation. The method given hereafter only applies to uniform straight members for which the cross section is symmetric about the bending plane. The conditions of restraint at each end are at least restraint against the lateral movement. So it means that they are not moving restraint against torsional about the longitudinal axis. The elastic critical moment may be calculated from the following formula derived from the buckling theory. So here is the given equation that we can calculate. So in this uh, equation, we have different parameters. E is Young modulus, 210 gigapascal. G is the shear modulus, 80 gigapascal and IZ is the second moment of area about the weak axis. IT is the torsional constant. IW is the warping constant. L is the beam length between points which have lateral restraint. K and KW are effective length factors. ZG is the distance between the point of load application and the shear center. For doubly symmetric sections, the shear center coincides with the centroid. Also, it is important to check the K factors. The factor K refers to end rotation on plane. It is analogous to the ratio of the buckling length to the system length for a compression member. K should be taken as not less than 1 unless less than 1 can be justified. The factor KW refers to end warping unless a special provision for warping fixity is made. KW should be taken as 1. So it means that if you have uh, some sort of a restraint uh, against warping, then you can use a smaller value than 1 for k, kw. And also about this equation, in the general case, zg is positive for loads acting towards the shear center from the point of application. Here in the figure 2, 1, we can see that then the force is applying on the top which the top refers to compressive flange, then ZG should be positive. And when the load is applied to the tensile flange, ZG should be taken as negative. Coming back to the equation, the easiest way is using uh, MapCat to write down the equation. So I can just use MapCat and I will use also the same MapCat that we used for total potential energy method that we used. Uh, it is good that we have these values as well. We don't need to write them down again. C1, we will come back to this in a while. C2, K and KW. So M critical will be C1 times pi 2 times E times IZ divided by K times L power by 2 multiplied by S square root of K divided by KW power by 2 times IW divided by IZ plus K times L power by 2 times G times IT torsional constant and then divided by pi power by 2 times E 
times IZ plus C2 times ZG power by 2 and then minus C2 times ZG. So about the given equation, we can see that ZG, if ZG is negative, then we have more critical bending moment. And if ZG is positive, then we have less M critical. It doesn't affect this uh, term in the S square root as far as it is powered by two, but it will affect the total value of M critical. C1, C2, K and KW for now, let's take K and K warping as one and C1 and C2, we can have a look on the material here about the values of C1 and C2. So in general, we can calculate C1 and C2 for uh, different beams. Here in section 3.2, you can see that the members with the N moments only, it means that you do not have any load between the supports or lateral restraint. You can calculate C1 from the given equation and C2 doesn't affect the calculation. And then for members with transverse loading, here we can see that C1 and C2 are given in the table 3.2. C1 is taken as 1.127 and C2 is taken as 0 0.454. So these two values can be taken for our case. However, our case is a little bit different because we have uh, fixed supports uh, in terms of rotation about longitudinal axis but we can fix it with another coefficient later. So here C1 is taken as 1.127 and C2 is 0 0.45 and ZG. So let's assume ZG of destabilizing is going to be positive and it's on the top of the cross section. The total height of the cross section is for HEA 200 is 190 millimeters, so it will be 95 millimeter. Here we can write down instead of ZGD, I can simply write ZG. And then M critical with this given values will be 186 kilonewton meter. In other words, we can say that Q critical will be as far as the moment is Q L square divided by eight, so it will be eight times M critical divided by L square. So here we can see that the critical load for this beam for making this critical moment is quite a smaller than what we got from the calculation. If you remember Q critical for the ANSYS calculation was 171 when the load was on the top or was in the destabilizing position. So it was 171 and here we can see that it is only 93. The main reason is about selecting C1 and C2 that we are with a very limited table for selecting C1 and C2 and also KW which is the warping. The given equation and the given kw equals to 1 is when we are dealing with a simple beam which is uh, not restrained about the rotation in terms of fixity. It means that if you have a kind of uh, restraint or fork support at both ends preventing any rotation then you can use a smaller value of kw. To understand this a little bit better, let's go through one example. If we are dealing with this type of column under force P, for the buckling we know that the buckling coefficient is 1. So K will be 1, that's for sure. It's restrained along the transverse movement. If we change the supports to be fixed, it's better not to sketch this way, and if we apply the load, then the buckling will be with the sketch shape. So here K will be taken as one over two. The same applies when we are uh, with a situation that the fork supports at both ends are restraining the rotation of the beam. As a result, the warping cannot happen like simple support. As a result, we can change this KW to one over two or 0 0.5. Here we can see that the given equation has now a better uh, 
or closer value to what we got from also the ANSYS model. So here we can see that the critical moment is changed to 320 and with Q critical of 160. If I change this ZG to zero millimeter, then it will be 198. Here we can see that it was 206 and with our calculation, it was about 230. So as far as this is going to be used widely for, for many questions, it should be more conservative and we can see that it is. And if we change it to minus 95 millimeter, then we can see that it's coming to be 244, which with the calculation uh, with ANSYS and also with uh, RFM, it was 243, which is very close to what we got from software analysis. And here, this is our hand calculation according to approximation 276. So here it is. It's better if I just copy these values for our notes. Let's change this to first 95 millimeter. So if uh, in destabilizing case and calculation, the value was Q critical was 188 kN per meter and M critical was 376 kN. With ANSYS model, Q critical was 171, which means that M critical will be 342. With RFM, it was 170.5, the same almost. And now with the given equation, Q critical is 160.2 kN per meter and M critical is 320 kN. Now we can change the value to zero. Now this is neutral for our hand calculation. The value was 230, which means that 230 times L squared divided by 8, 460 kilonewton meter. In ANSYS, it was 206. RFM, 206, exactly the same. And with hand calculation here, it's 198 kilonewton, 396 kilonewton. And also for a stabilizing case, we need to change this to minus 95 millimeter. For a stabilizing condition, Q critical in hand calculation was 276, resulting in 276, 552. And with ANSYS, it was 243. The same for the use of RFM. And here also we can see that it's 244, 488 or 9 meter. So this is the widely used equation for calculation of a critical bending moment according to the beam that we have. There are also uh, more information in the reference that I put the link into the notes that you can download and read by yourself. Also, if uh, I can find a good example, perhaps in the future, I will record one more example for that. That's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. We started to model one simple beam under distributed load and uh, with a special condition for both end supports. Uh, we went through the calculation of a stability of the beam with using total potential energy with approximation method. And then we modeled the same beam uh, with ANSYS and RFM. We compared the results. And this is the last video of this example using the a uh, widely used equation for double symmetric sections that you can use in your calculation. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.